As time has gone on, there's been uh, a lot of basic science discoveries that are looking at the actual mechanisms of how androgens interact with the prostate cancer itself. And what we've been learning is, particularly through the development of newer agents that are out there, that castrate refractory prostate cancer or prostate cancer that no longer responds to low levels of hormone, in fact, does respond to hormone levels that are very low, but through different mechanisms. So what this has done is caused everybody to go and look again at what's the optimum testosterone level that we should strive for in patients who are trying to treat for advanced prostate cancer. So. Right now, the, the official definition of what a castration level of testosterone is, is 50 nanograms per deciliter. That's the official definition. But as we're looking at it more and more, it seems that there's suggestive data that the lower you can get the testosterone, the better the outcome will be. So that a lot of literature is suggesting lower testosterone levels give better outcomes. So although 50 is the official number, now we're starting to say, well, maybe 50 is too high. Maybe that number should be 20. And in fact, some people even suggesting that number should be lower. It's very difficult to obtain levels less than 20 uh, on a routine basis with injectable agents. It's more likely to be done with surgical castration, but the newer agents that are out there are really able to drive testosterone levels down even below, below the level of 20.